Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you the prototype of my reflow plate or reflow station, however we want to call it. And I will show you how it works. I will introduce you all the different parts and what they do in this, uh, let's say, experimental setup. And then uh, I will try to make a test. So before starting the video, I have to emphasize that uh, this thing works with uh, mains voltage. In Europe it is 230 volts and that can hurt you really badly if you are not doing uh, the things properly so I just want to let you know that this project is kind of dangerous in a sense that if you don't know what you are doing you can get hurt so please be very very careful when you are working with mains voltage and uh, I will also uh, point out a few things that I'm doing and which might emphasize uh, things which uh, which could help us to handle these things uh, more safely but also if you notice something that i did it wrong then let me know in the comments and we will discuss it and i will make a follow-up in a in a, another video so i discovered that actually this thing uh, became quite uh, popular among uh, many creators and on Instagram, I saw a lot of uh, reflow stations, reflow plates or reflow ovens uh, being made or their prototypes are being made. And it's very funny because I did this totally independently of those things. And it's just a coincidence that uh, I happened to uh, discover two uh, creators who made similar things, not uh, this kind of uh, plate thing exactly this but uh, quite similar but that but the final purpose is that to create a device which can uh, solder smd uh, boards and then uh, i even talked to one of these guys because uh, he made a very nice equipment and uh, we just exchanged a few ideas but then uh, here in this video i show my uh, ideas and i show my prototype so what we want to do here is that uh, we can start with some boards, let's say these kind of PCBs and uh, these PCBs have very tiny components and uh, they need different kind of soldering other than just uh, using a soldering iron and then just uh, soldering the parts. Of course if you, if you are uh, good enough you can do it with hand but maybe not for this board so what you want to do is that you want to put these boards on a hot surface whose temperature is more or less regulated and then uh, make a preheat and soak the board and then go up to the reflow temperature and finally cool down the board so the liquid metal will solidify and then the solder joints will create a solid and galvanic connection between the uh, tabs here and uh, the leg of the component. So that's what the purpose of this device. And uh, you can see that uh, these are PCBs from my earlier projects. Uh, namely, this is from my own custom made microcontroller. And this is from my custom made AS5600 uh, magnetic encoder for stepper motors so this board is fitted uh, for a NEMA 17 stepper motor and actually both of these uh, boards uh, bring to us to the sponsor of this video PCBWay so PCBWay is a service provider who can help you with PCB prototyping PCB assembly as well as sourcing the parts for your PCB but they also have special PCB services. For example, they can make a flexible PCB. And it's really easy to order PCBs from them. You just have to go to PCB Instant Quote. And once you arrive to this place, you can click Quick Order PCB. And after uploading your Gerber file by clicking here and selecting your Gerber file on your PC, you can customize your board according to your wishes. If you have a lot of SMD parts, I'd strongly recommend you to select an SMD stencil. And if you don't want to worry about assembling your PCB and sourcing the parts, you can also select their assembly service where they will source you everything and assemble you everything if you wish. And in addition to their PCB related services, they also have CNC machining, 
and 3D printing both in metal and plastic. And I want to encourage you to check out their services related to CNC machining and 3D printing because they offer a 10% discount. And you have a very easy job to test their services. You just go to the CNC 3D printing tab. Then you can select your preferred service. And after uploading the corresponding file, you can customize your part and send your order. So I hope that you like and will use PCB based services. And then you can make similar boards. Actually, you can order these exact boards using my links, or you can make even better boards and uh, order them uh, from them. So we want to solder these kind of boards. So we need to have a regulated temperature uh, on a surface. And of course, yes, I can use this miniature hot plate, uh, which I have already used, but uh, sometimes I have bigger boards or I want to solder multiple boards at the same time. So then uh, using this tiny board or tiny uh, hot plate becomes quite challenging. So then I thought, oh, why not make my own? And then this is a LED desoldering plate, which you can just uh, Google and uh, buy it easily from uh, eBay, AliExpress or wherever you can uh, buy it. And they say that they are roughly uh, 300 watts and uh, they seem to give 300 watts when they uh, run at the peak power. But this is not enough for my board that I want to use uh, for my final prototype. So this is the heating part itself. And I actually made a separate board, which is a huge uh, 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters uh, wide aluminum plate. And this is uh, five millimeter thick. And then I have glass fiber uh, insulation on the bottom and it's fixed with a stainless steel mesh and it has legs and everything. But then I tried uh, heating this up with my uh, with, with this heating plate, so under this insulation, where you see these uh, four inner uh, bolts, we have exactly the same type. So when I heated this thing up, it was so sluggish. So then I figured out that uh, we might need larger performance. So now this is just a prototype regarding the heating part, but the electronics works perfectly now, uh, as far as it can be called as, uh, as perfect. But for my purposes, it is uh, perfect. And I will show you uh, how it's done. So this thing inside, where the two cables come out, it has a PTC, positive thermal coefficient uh, heater. Uh, it's a self-regulating heater. And um, how it works is that if the temperature of this device uh, goes to a certain threshold, then uh, the resistance of the device goes so high that it limits its own current. So then uh, the device kind of turns off until it cools down and then it turns on again. But it's not like entirely turns off, but the resistance will be so high that uh, only just a small current can flow through it. So it will not uh, heat itself further. And then in this scenario, I just use a triac switch here. Here is the triac and an octocoupler, which will uh, switch the triac on and off. Uh, and this uh, switch can switch AC and it will do nothing else than just uh, check if the, if the set point is reached. If it's reached, it turns off this heat heater. And if it's not reached, it turns it on until the set point is reached. And uh, you should know, or you might already know this, that these on-off uh, switching uh, things are not so efficient when it comes to temperature regulation. So this will not be a perfect example of uh, how to regulate the heat or the temperature of a heating plate, but uh, it will give you a very simple solution, which you can also implement. So this uh, triac switch is of course, uh, controlled by an Arduino. I'm using an Arduino Nano and uh, I have a TFT um, LCD display, 1.8 uh, inches, uh, 128 times 160 pixels. Uh, and I made a very fancy uh, controlling uh, interface. You will see it soon, uh, which you can control with the rotary encoder. And then on this side of the board, uh, there is a 
MAX 6675 thermocouple and then the thermocouple goes in here and then here there is a transistor switch uh, BD139 uh, transistor which switches these two fans here and then uh, what we do is we can set up a reflow curve and then based on the different portions of this uh, or sections of the of the uh, reflow curve uh, the Arduino will try to follow that uh, reflow curve and it will try to regulate the triac thus the temperature of this plate according to the programmed uh, curve so with the first experiment I will show you how this works without any kind of uh, PCB and then uh, I will collect the parts for this AS5600 uh, PCB and then we, so we will solder this. So first I will uh, create a video, a close-up video of this display and then I will create another close-up video of the soldering process. I have just one additional camera uh, so I cannot do it at the same time. And uh, one more thing is that here uh, there is a 12 volt fan and I will tell you why it is there because uh, that kind of dampens uh, the heating of this uh, heating plate because there is always an overshoot when we cross the set point from the bottom so when we go up in the temperature uh, and the Arduino detects that the triac has to be turned off then the temperature is already way beyond uh, the set point and uh, if I have that fan there which is continuously running that kind of helps us to dampen and uh, decrease that uh, overshoot. It's not perfect, you will see it, but uh, it will work. And then, so what we have here is that uh, here the power cable comes in and uh, what I did is that here the brown cable, which is the live cable, which is now not powered of course, that's why I'm so brave to touch these things, it's unplugged. So the brown cable, the, the, the hot wire goes into the triac uh, circuit and then it's being switched with the triac and then of course uh, it's switched in a way that on one of the wires it goes into the PTC, it comes back from the PTC, so that's like the switched hot part and then uh, it leaves the circuit, we can say it like that, so actually this part here is connected to the blue part which is the neutral part so the neutral comes to this clip here and it goes into this. We will measure the current uh, uh, with this multimeter and then it leaves the multimeter through the black wire, goes back to the clip and then goes into the outlet's uh, neutral wire, blue. And one thing, uh, well maybe it's a funny thing, but I had difficulties of... Uh, memorizing which cable is which based on the colors. So we have brown as the live, uh, blue as the neutral and then we have this green yellow cable for the ground. And that, that's very easy to memorize because it consists of two colors. But then it's always hard to distinguish between, or for me it was uh, always hard to distinguish between the brown and the blue wire. So then uh, there is a very funny way that I finally manage to not note or memorize what is the brown cable and if you touch the brown you will shoot your pants and then your pants will be brown so that's how I remembered this and then you can just by excluding the ground cable you can figure out which one is the blue and then as you can see there is this ground wire and that is running under this uh, heated plate and that is because it is attached to one of the legs. So it's in a galvanic connection with the heated plate. And that's another safety thing. Uh, because if something goes wrong in this PTC, it can happen that this huge metal surface becomes live. And then you don't want to touch that. But if it becomes live and the current finds its path through the ground to the ground, then uh, that can hopefully... I yeah, break my uh, brake or switch my breaker and then save me if I would touch this thing. But I also have rubber gloves, so hopefully that will not happen. And another thing is that uh, 
I have this plastic plate and I will just put this over here so th there is no chance that I accidentally bump into one of the hot wires or live wires and then uh, finally I have this thermometer here I can even touch and uh, switch it on right now and hopefully you will see it but uh, this will be just a control to measure the temperature inside this so let's start the experiment uh, here so I turn on the, the multimeter and uh, I switched it to the current mode it is also the, the banana plug is in the current uh, socket and then I had to press this select button because then it turns the AC uh, measurement on so that's fine and then uh, I can turn on the Arduino meanwhile and I will start recording the display as well and now as you can see uh, you can see the reflow curve so it consists of one two three four five sections the first section is a yellow color and uh, that is the preheating and that goes up to 90 degrees Celsius and uh, it will take 90 seconds to reach that and uh, we can change it if you want so I will just show it with one example that I can select one of the values and I click on it then the green uh, highlighting indicates that I can change this value and let's change it, this to 100 degrees and then if I press this the curve will be redrawn according to the new value so as you can see now the yellow the end of the yellow part jumped up and then we have the soaking phase with orange and that goes up to 130 degrees the temperature is always indicated with a red color and uh, it takes uh, 180 seconds from the start of this process so 90 additional seconds to reach the soaking uh, temperature and then we have the red section the the slope and that goes up to 165 degrees and it will be reached at the 240 seconds uh, time so 60 additional seconds from the end of the soaking phase and then we have a holding phase for 10 seconds only at the same temperature that's still red but that's the constant slope and then you can see that there is a slope uh, a negative slope with a blue color and uh, that is just the cooling phase that is not being uh, programmed in any way that is just uh, an arbitrary negative slope just to show that there we expect the heating plate to be cooled and then on the in the top left corner you see the actual temperature which is being read by the thermocouple and then you can see the ticks on the vertical axis which is the temperature and one tick is uh, 50 degrees celsius so the first one from the bottom is at 50 degrees and then we have it at, at 100 150 and 200 and at the end of the axis is at 270 degrees and on the horizontal axis the white one we have uh, a tick at every 30 seconds and the very end of the x-axis so the right side of the display is at 300 seconds or five minutes typical reflow curves can fit into this and this reflow curve is based on a low melting point uh, soldering paste which I am using so I pre-programmed uh, these numbers so now all we have to do is I have to power up everything so this is still uh, unplugged and everything and we will start the, the procedure so I will just go to the start I have to highlight it and then when I will press the start button the switch of the rotor encoder then there will be another curve starting to show up because that will be the curve of the real-time uh, temperature measurement so I will power up the things and we will see what is happening so now you will probably hear some kind of noise hopefully not too much but I turned on the fan uh, which is blowing at the heating plate 
And now these wires are live, so I will be very careful because uh, yeah, this can potentially lead to an accident. So everything is fine and I just press this button and we see how the temperature will be developing. So while this is ongoing, you can see four fields at the top left corner. The capital T on the top left corner is the actual measured temperature. The T prime next to it is the target temperature at the given moment. Then under it, we see that preheat, if it has a red background, that means that the triac is off. And, when, uh, and that also means that we are beyond or about the uh, program temperature. And then you can see that the T prime at this moment should be 56 Celsius, but we are at 80 degrees uh, Celsius. And then the small t, uh, that uh, quite obvious, that is just uh, the time. So that is the elapsed time uh, since we pressed uh, the button which started the program. So now we start to approach uh, the T prime again and the preheat will have a green background as you can see. So now it is green which means that uh, the heater is turned on. So when the heater is on, now of course uh, the, the plate is being heated up and then uh, the temperature of the plate should increase. And as you can see, it is increasing and soon if we have the elapsed time and if we have the, cur uh, the, the correct temperature, so if we are, if we reached or we are beyond uh, the uh, preheat temperature, then uh, the program steps into the next phase, which is the soaking. So now we would expect a flat curve here, or almost a flat curve. You can see that the slope of this part is uh, much less, but of course, because of the inertia of this system, uh, we will not have a flat curve. And because of the way I control this, uh, we don't have a flat curve. But you can see that uh, we are more or less around the uh, program curve. So now you see that the temperature is quite high, uh, way beyond the T prime, the program temperature. So then uh, the Arduino just lets the hot plate to cool down by itself and by the forced air cooling. And soon, or now, we met the uh, program temperature again. So now I can see that the triac is turned on. It takes one amperes right now and it's being heated. And now you can see that we entered the reflow phase. So that means that we have a new target temperature and then uh, we still try to follow this uh, curve. And again, we crossed the program temperature, we went below it. So of course the heater turns on. Again, it takes roughly one amps and it keeps going until we cross the, the program temperature. And of course, as the time advances, the program temperature will also increase and then uh, the, the target goes more and more up. So then the triac will be on for longer and longer time periods. And now we are at the holding temperature that is just a 10 seconds uh, portion of this uh, curve. And now we entered the cooling phase, as you can see. And now I can also see that the tiny fans turned on. I can also hear it. So now we have these two blowers and uh, they blow the room temperature air on the plate to make it cool faster. And then this can be also directed on the 
on the circuit the pressure they generate is not too high so they cannot blow off the parts and we will test this of course but uh, they can cool down the parts so the solder will be able to solidify and uh, the solder will be able to hold the parts on the PCB So now as you can see the program is finished well we more or less followed the curve and now I can see and hear that the fans turned off so now all I have to do is I just press the stop and that will uh, put us back to the main menu and it's done so we are back here this is still hot as you can see 96 degrees so meanwhile this thing is cooling uh, I will prepare one PCB of this and we will try to solder it. Uh, I already turned off the power so don't worry if I yeah, touch things because uh, I already removed all the uh, dangerous things. So let me prepare this, let this cool down to room temperature again and uh, we will see how the soldering works. I will use uh, my uh, microscope or uh, macro lens and that will show us the show us the uh, soldering process in a nice perspective so here is the pcb i prepared everything and uh, first of all i will apply some solder paste on the tabs and uh, after that i will put on the parts and finally we will try the soldering So now let's place this board on the hot plate. So now everything seems to be ready for the test. So all I will do, I will just press the start button and we will see how this uh, process will go on. So now the cooling fans are off and it's only the main fan which is running. So we had a six minute long uh, session here. One minute of uh, fan based cooling at the end and five minutes for the preheat, soak, reflow, hold uh, periods. So now I can uh, take uh, this uh, circuit board off from the heated plate. And I will take a few close-up pictures just to see how it uh, went. I had to adjust two parts during the uh, soldering phase, but that was just because I guess I did not apply the paste uh, properly, so they started to stick upwards. So let's take a few pictures of this, which I will show you on the video, and we will see uh, how the soldering went. So this is the capacitor side of the chip. And as you can see, uh, the C1 is a little bit uh, funny because on its left side, there's a bit too much solder and on the right side, there's a little bit too little solder, but uh, it still seems to be properly attached to the pads. So I accept it. And also the legs of the chip are attached uh, nicely. And then if we look at the other side, the resistor side, uh, we can also see a little bit of imbalance of the uh, applied soldering material, but that was also just because of my uh, clumsiness. So you can see that uh, R1 has a bit too much uh, solder on one side, but a bit too little on the other side. But they are also well attached and uh, they, they seem fine. And also the legs of the uh, chip 
uh, looks quite okay and it seems to be uh, soldered properly to the surface. So all in all I'm quite satisfied with this uh, let's say experimental prototype. As you can see uh, the soldering was acceptable and it could uh, be done quite easily and it was controlled in a nice uh, manner so that was nice. And uh, now actually the next step is to put all these parts which I showed you uh, instead of a prototype board or breadboard on a PCB. And my PCB is actually already being manufactured by PCBWay. So in the next video, uh, my first thing will be to show you the newly built uh, PCB, which is actually based on the same parts which are shown here on the uh, board. So we will have the thermocouple module uh, that will measure the temperature on the hot plate. Then we will have a transistor module which will turn the fans on and off. Uh, we will have the display, we will have the rotor encoder and we will have the Arduino Nano. And then also there will be an additional circuit similar to uh, this circuit here, uh, a triac circuit. Uh, that will switch the heater on and off and obviously this heater is not the, the very best so I ordered a few different kind of uh, heaters and I will see which will cooperate the best with this kind of uh, on off uh, switching. As you can see or as you could see uh, we could follow the program curve quite nicely of course it's not perfect we can control the triac with this uh, phase angle control or phase uh, control in a much better way or we can do uh, PID control we can use other things uh, to control the heater but I think for hobby purposes uh, this will be fine so if you need the schematics of this uh, drawing don't forget to visit my website the link is down in the description I will put uh, the schematics there but uh, I will not put the program, uh, the source code there, because first of all, that is for my Patreons. So don't forget to visit my Patreon website and uh, follow me there. And then you will get the free access to that code. But that will be only published uh, on the next video when I will show you the PCB. Because uh, until that, I have a little time to try to further improve this program. But I'm more or less satisfied with it already. But uh, within a few weeks, I will be able to provide the PCB from PCBWay and I will be able to provide the full source code with full explanation uh, for an Arduino uh, based uh, microcontroller. And hopefully that will be helpful for you to uh, possibly further develop this system or develop your own and uh, borrowing ideas from this system and learning from its mistakes and so on and so on. So once again don't forget to visit my website curiousscientist.tech. If you feel that my videos are useful or helpful to you uh, you can also become my Patreon so please check the link in the description where you can go to my Patreon site. You will find some behind the scenes uh, things there like pictures, small videos and so on. As I progress with my channel I will upload more and more things. And you will also get access to the source code uh, or source codes which I publish during my projects uh, like this. And also don't forget to visit pcbway.com because they have amazing services, most importantly PCB services uh, or PCB related services. But they also have machining, uh, they also have 3D printing, both metal and plastic and other things. So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.